up, guys? My name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with Royal Family International University School of Identity and Lifestyle. And you'll be seeing here that it says RFIU Academy. I'll be talking to you about that here in a little bit. But anyways, the video that you're gonna be listening to today is how do you approach someone for healing and what are the mental processes of what you do after that? And pretty much, do you wanna grow or do you wanna struggle? This is the issue that we run into as believers. And if you were like me, you just don't know what to do. Sometimes you just run into a situation and you start panicking, you start worrying, and sometimes you just lock up or maybe you say, hey, you know, I prayed for someone, I didn't see anything. You know, what's going on? The Bible says that we should see miracles because Jesus saw them, so we should see them. So what is going on? Right, and I want to talk about that today. What's going on, guys? What's up? Joe, what's cracking, brother? Miss you, man. Tara, how you doing? Mary, what's cracking? What's going on? Peter, art man, what's cracking, brother? Been seeing what you've been doing. David, hey, awesome. Hey, if you know someone who struggles with what I'm going to be talking about today, what you want to do is you want to hit your share button. I am going to go all the way in. Guys, hear me out. This is going to be at least an hour long. All my videos are usually an hour long because uh, I like to get in depth. You know, I don't just like to talk about surface stuff, so I like to get in there. So if uh, you know someone that can benefit from this, share this with them. So, yeah. So, okay, let's get started. <clears throat> so... One of the questions that I get asked the most is how do I approach someone and how can I get them to say yes or how can I get the miracle to manifest? So most of the issues that believers have that I deal with in the circle that I deal with is they're not worried about whether the miracle will manifest or not. What they worry about is getting rejected. What they worry about is looking crazy or maybe overcoming that hump where they feel nervous, their hands will start sweating. They won't know what to say. They won't know what to do. It'll feel like they're going in circles. What's going on, Angela? And I want to talk about that, okay? So, now, when I first got started, I started watching um, Todd White. I listened to Curry Blake for two years. I had him on the headphones when I was cleaning the restrooms at the soup kitchen. Uh, I watched a lot of videos that Curry Blake had had up about the DHT. And if you don't know what the DHT is, uh, this is me endorsing the DHT. The reason I endorse it is because I know Curry Blake. I know his heart. I know what he's about. He's just an amazing man of God. Uh, Curry Blake is just, man, he's just so real. Uh, Todd White, if you haven't seen any of Todd White's videos, this is me endorsing Todd White. Uh, back when I watched Todd White, he only had like six videos, not even that, maybe three videos that I watched over and over and over. And uh, as you know, Todd White is on another mission now that he's now drawing in a lot of people. So he has a lot of influence now. So very rarely do you see him out on the streets. Very rarely do you see it unless it's something that he's working on. But Todd White is another amazing man of God. Both of these men I've sat down with and I've had heart to hearts with. So it's not just someone that I'm just, you know, endorsing because they're on YouTube. I sat down with Todd White. I had a conversation with him. I talked to him, got to know him, uh, know his heart, know what he's about. Same with Curry. So anyone that I, I name on here is because I know them personally. It's not just me saying, hey, you know, giving you a shout out. It's because I honor these men. They, they lay down a foundation for what it is that we walk in now. We forget that. You got to honor those who paved the way for us, okay? So they were there, and I honor these men with my life because these guys stepped out when nobody else was doing it, and they got the flack. I got the flack. You're going to get the flack, and this is something that you need to address right now in your heart. Are you willing to be able to handle the flack that is going to be coming your way if you decide that you want to put videos out, if you decide that you want to step out there, if you want to step out on the limb, if you decide right now that you want to be what you are watching people do through Christ, if you want to be that man or that woman, remember, you have to count the cost because sometimes the men of God that do what it is that we've been doing don't have thick skin and they have to realize that they're going to get quick. Uh, they're going to get thick skin really, really quick if they understand what it is I'm going to teach you today. OK, the problem that we have in the body is we don't teach the mental capacity. We don't teach how to steward the thoughts and the emotions that are going to come your way. They're going to hit you like a freight train when you're out there. But we don't ever talk about that because usually we just talk about, OK, Jesus said, go do these things. So we just go do these things now. That sounds 
pretty simple, but it's easier said than done because what ends up happening is you're out there by yourself and right away you start feeling really weird because now you're looking around and it seems like you're stalking people. It seems like you're just trying to find someone in wheelchairs, someone in crutches, and you're just trying to get over that hump, trying to go over that feeling of this just feels awkward. What is going on inside of me? If I could just not feel what I'm feeling now, I'd go up to everyone. And guys, there is some people that I know that just love to get along with people, that love to talk, love to go up to people. And one of those guys that I know, and you know, his name is Tom Loud. Tom Loud is one of those guys that'll just go up to anyone at any time, regardless of what's going on. He's totally just been doing it for so long now that he's just like, hey, you know, I'll go up to this guy. Go, oh yeah, it's all right. Hey, you know what? You know, and I'm one of those guys too. Like I can do it at any time. It's just it's natural for me because I understand this is a lifestyle. So um, let's just get started with what we're talking about. We are at war. Well, here's what's crazy about that, Kevin. We are at war, but most of the wars that we battle as Christians that we don't understand is the war in our minds and the wars in our heart and the war in our flesh. These are the very things that keep us from going up to people. And sometimes we're so focused on the spiritual battle, the spiritual warfare that we never really address what's going on with us. We never really address, okay, why am I feeling this way? My, why am I feeling nervous? Why am I sweating? Why am I uh, shaking? Why is my voice sounding this way? Why do I feel paralyzed? Why is it that I can't just get a hold of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing, right? And that's a whole nother battle that I'm going to be dressing today. So anyways, so I'm just going to give you a quick run through of what's gonna happen. So let's say, uh, let's say I'm at Walmart and I just decide, and first of all, this is a mindset that you need to get rid of, okay? Um, you gotta get rid of this mindset this fast, okay? We are not going out to minister. That is not what we're going out to do, okay? I know that the institution, when I say the institution, I'm talking about the church, the physical carnal church. When I say the carnal church, I'm talking about the church that only talks about we need to do stuff opposed to be stuff, right? Because we need to be sons and daughters of the most high God. Okay. When I say carnal church, I'm talking about the works the just going, the just doing, the, the shaking the gates and not really understanding what it is that's happened to us in Christ. Okay. So what we're being taught is we're being taught to go and minister and we'll do this maybe once or twice a week. And we'll get a piece of paper and we'll write on that piece of paper how many people we can lead to Christ, right? And that's what the agenda of the church usually is. When I say agenda, it's like, okay, we're going out. How many people did you lead to the Lord today? Okay, how many people did, 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 did recommit themselves to Jesus? And, and we think that's what it's all about, okay? Now, don't misunderstand me. That's very important, okay? I'm not saying it's not important. That is very important, okay? But that is not all of what we're supposed to be doing, okay? There's a lot more to that. What's up, Michael Torres? Love you, love you, bro. So, we're being taught, okay, not everyone, but most of the, the majority of the body is being taught that we are to go out and find people and ask them, hey, okay, you know, how are you living? You know, are, are you a sinner? You know, what's going on? You know, have you lied? Have you cheated? And basically, we're trying to convince them of, how wrong they are or how messed up they are, okay? Now, don't misunderstand me. That's okay if you want to give them the Roman road and you want to do all that. Whatever you need to do, I'm okay with that, okay? But what I want to address is getting beyond that wall that will allow us to lay hands on them, that will allow us to prophesy over them, that will allow us to talk about the things that God has for them and talking about the kingdom of God and actually allowing it to manifest right there in front of their eyes, okay? Because the reality is that we can convince people to say a prayer or we can convince people that God is real and that God loves them and that God is alive, right? And that's something that I've learned. I've learned that when you can show a believer or it doesn't matter who it is, if you can show them a tangible move of God, when I'm talking about a tangible, I'm talking about bones moving. I'm talking about healings. I'm talking about a move of the Holy Spirit over the body. I'm talking about something so powerful that it shakes the reality and the foundations of everything that they ever thought wasn't real. Like basically it brings them to a place that says, okay, I didn't know that this existed. 
Okay, I knew that there was a God or maybe I didn't know there was a God, but now I'm so convinced that there's something greater than me, something stronger than my reality, something that is pushing the boundaries of my mental capacity that is showing me something that's there that I never thought was there or maybe I thought it was there, but I never really understood it. Right. And that's my job. My job as a believer and as a son of God is to bring people to the realities, to be able to go up to people and not just talk to them about the gospel, but actually allowing the word to become flesh and allowing the gospel to, to breathe and move through the believer. And what I mean is it becomes a lifestyle to those who walk in this, right? Now, we don't teach lifestyle. We teach, hey, go out and preach or go out and minister and go out and do these things. And, and don't misunderstand me. Like I said before, there's nothing wrong with that. What's up, James? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? What I want to do is I want to tighten up some things. I want to show you how to be more effective when you go out there. Okay, that's what it's all about, being more effective. That's what it's about. Guys, because what I've done is I traveled the world, okay, and I've gone door to door. I've been out on the streets. I've been at the malls. I've been at the flea markets. I've been in the slums. I've been everywhere pretty much just bringing people to Jesus. And one thing that I've understood in doing that is that we bring them to Jesus, but then we walk away. And then they start doubting that what they did worked. And in some of the churches that are preaching now in the carnal church is when they go to church, they'll even convince them that they're not saved. And what they did on the street, they, they meant it. But it really didn't take effect until, you know, something else happens to them. And then now they're doubting everything that was being told to them. And now they're trying to find out how to receive what it is that supposedly we gave them. Right? So, I'm just, that's a whole nother area. But I'm, I'm going to move it. So, let's say, let's say I'm at Walmart. Okay? And I'm going to talk about 10 years ago. Okay, I'm not going to talk about now because now it's a whole nother ball game for me. I can go anywhere and it's just, it's, it's like, it's, nor it's normal for me now. This is like a normal reality. I was in the locker room in Emporia, Kansas with Conrad, my brother-in-law. And there was a guy in a towel, right? And this is, just, this is just me. I'm walking in there. I'm putting my stuff in there. I'm about to work out. And this guy tells my brother-in-law that he has this issue with his knees. And I'm like, you have issues with your knees? And he's like, yeah. I said, how long have you had those issues as I'm getting dressed? And he's like, oh, I've had it for a long time. I said, hey, man, you ought to let me pray for you. Now, he's in a towel. And he's like, he has this weird look, like, you know, and my brother-in-law's like, uh, you know, kind of looking weird. And he said, oh, well, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people pray for me. And I said, I haven't prayed for you. You haven't had me pray for you. And he just felt really weird. He was like, uh, you know, and he kind of like, and so I, I'm like, well, all right, you know, praise God. Hallelujah. You know? And I walked out. I still prayed for him in my heart and in my mind. I said, Lord, heal that man in the name of Jesus. I don't need to touch that man. Right now, this is something you need to understand. And, and, and guys, if you get this, okay, just because he said he didn't want it, doesn't mean I didn't do it, okay? Just because he said, hey, you know, it's okay. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. See, it ain't about me and you. And it's not about what you believe. And it's not about where you're at. It's about I'm a son of God. And I see pain in your knee and I hear about it. And my job as an ambassador of the living God is to crush that thing regardless of what you think. Because my battle's not with flesh and blood. It's with that knee. And so when I'm walking off, I'm like, huh, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Why? Because I don't need to say anything to that man. Because that thing's going to bow to me because I'm going to walk out. And I'm in the whole, I'm in the building. So the Bible says, right, that where there's a son. Right? That blessings will follow. Provision will follow. So I'm there proclaiming the kingdom of God. So it doesn't matter what he's thinking. It doesn't matter what the counter is thinking. It doesn't matter what my brother-in-law It doesn't matter what anybody's thinking. I'm the light. And when the light shines, it's over. So I'm walking off and I'm like, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, pain you will not exist in that knee. In the name Why? Because I've arrived. And I know who I am in the name of Jesus. And then I, I just didn't hear this on accident, okay? I understand who I am. And I'm walking in the spirit. And when I hear anything that is contrary to the word of God, I'm going to crush that thing. So I say, and, I'm, and, and, and here's what's crazy. In my mind, starts saying this. Well, you didn't lay hands on him. 
Well, I'm like, doesn't matter. Jesus just gave a word. And the same spirit that was in Jesus that raised the dead is in me. So I'm just going to give the word, right? And then my mind was like, well, his servant went. No, no, no. This guy got healed before the servant even got there, right? The servant got healed before he even got there. And in my heart, I'm saying this man is a servant. He's a servant to the most high God. He's a servant to the things of God. This, he doesn't know he's a servant, but I know he's a servant because my king, my king runs things and we're all servants. So guess what? He's a servant. So I'm going to speak, be healed, and I'm going to walk away. Now, you can ask yourself, well, that sounds kind of crazy, Pete. Maybe it does. But see, the battle's not with that man. The battle's not with his knee. The battle's not with he, you know, he's in a towel. The battle's not with Conrad. The battle's not with what's going on there in the room. The battle is, it, am I really who I say I am? Am I really a son of God? Or only when I can lay hands on someone, am I a son of God? Or when someone agrees with me, I'm a son of God? Or am I a son of God all the time? Now, this is the difference between a lifestyle and going out and ministering. See, most people would say, well, you know, I tried to minister to this guy, but I didn't get to. See, I ain't going to say that. I'm going to say, guess what? I ministered to that guy and he didn't even know it. Why? Because I'm a son and the power of the living God has no bounds because I carry the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not going to sit down just because this guy doesn't want to hear me. Because it's not about this guy. It's about what's happening with his knee. And this is what I train in. And this is who I am. And I'm just in my element. So guess what? It's got to go. Now, people in the room would probably, if they knew this, would say, Oh, Pete, you're crazy. Maybe I am. Well, Pete, you know, you didn't lay hands on him. Yeah, and what? Well, you know, Pete, how do you know it worked? What, what, well, okay, and then I'd say this. Um, the word of God always works, okay? The sons of God don't question their father. They honor him. And so that was me honoring him, even though the other guy didn't understand what was going on. And the battle is here in me because I don't want to manifest a miracle in the guy's knee. I want to manifest a son and a son will do what a son does regardless of what anybody else says regardless of what he's thinking regardless of what my brother-in-law's thinking regardless of what the whole world's thinking it doesn't have any bearing on what's happened to me because of what jesus has done and because i understand that i can move throughout the world right allowing god to be who he is and this is what's missing in the body of God, because we're always struggling with this idea, with this thought that we have to make sure that we can just get to someone and we have to make sure that they listen to us and they have to agree with us. And they have, it's like, look, man, it's not even about that other person. Okay. The, the first battle that we as believers need to address is the battle inside. The battle inside your mind, the battle inside your heart, the battle in your flesh. See, a lot of us want to fight the battle out there, but if you don't handle the battle here first, you won't do any good out there because what will happen is you won't see the things that you're wanting to see and they'll make you question everything you carry. They'll make you question everything that the word of God is trying to confirm in you and through you. But because we're not being trained to flow in what we carry... We're just doing stuff, and I don't want to just do stuff, okay? Every day for me is a revelation of who God is in every situation, and that is the battle that we don't ever talk about. So let's say I go to Walmart, right? We go to Walmart, and there's someone standing there. Now, here's the first thing that you're going to say. You're going to say, okay, we got to find someone in the wheelchair. We got to find someone in crutches. We got to find someone with, a, with an arm brace, and I tell people this, everybody's in crutches because everybody's hurting because a lot of people do not understand why Jesus came. So guess what? Everybody has a spiritual crutch. Everybody's hurting. Everybody's crying out. Everybody's looking for an answer. Everybody's looking for peace. Everybody wants what it is that Jesus has. But because we don't understand what we carry, we're just going to go look for guys in crutches. What if you don't find anybody in crutches? What do you do then? What do you do then when you don't see anybody in crutches? Well, I guess I'll just sit there until I see somebody has physical pain. Well, here's what's an amazing thing. What if we just decided to just be everything that Holy Spirit says we are 
and be loving, caring, and kind and all the things that he asks us to be through the fruits of the Spirit. And we just go and do that on a daily. And if we see someone in crutches, we've already been training the entire time. But because we've been focusing just on a guy in a wheelchair, just the guy with a brace, just the guy with a toothache or a headache and a migraine. Look, man, the Holy Spirit doesn't just work on that. He works on everything. And when you understand what it is that Holy Spirit's got, look, you have more things in your belt than Batman. Hear me out. Batman's got a lot of things in his belt. But when you got the Holy Ghost, oh man, you're going to have everything that that person needs. And how will you know that? Well, what you do is you learn how to go up to someone and you get them to feel comfortable with you. You get them to fall in love with what it is with what you carry. But because we don't teach people to walk in what they carry, we kind of convince the person that they need to listen to us. How about what we carry is so amazing? And it's so, so irresistible that when we go up to someone, they just actually want to have a conversation with us and actually want to talk to us and actually want to hang out with us just because we're not asking them for anything and we're just being who we are. Now, when Jesus was out there with the 12, he wasn't ministering. We call it ministering because we were watching him, but he was calling it being a son of God, because that's what a son does. He says, look, I only do what the father does. I only say what the father says. But because we don't have that relationship with Jesus and the father, we'll say, well, the Bible says this. The word says this. And don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying don't listen to your word or read your word. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because we don't have that relationship and that connection with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost is that we have to give them scripture when the reality is we need to give them the person. And once the person shows up, they'll fall in love with the person and the person will give them scripture. But because we don't do that, we let Pepper give them scripture and what ends up happening nine times out of ten is we'll get into a spiritual debate about, well, you know, what about this? And what about that? Well, what about the Sabbath? Well, you, you know, what about the Seventh-day Adventists? They go on Saturdays. Do you, do you go on, you know, what, what do you go on? You go on Sundays. Well, you, do you go in the morning? Do you go in the evening? Hey, do you believe in praying in tongues? Hey, do you believe in prophecy? Do you believe in hanging the hands? Hey, what do you believe in? And, and that's what Pepper does. And so you'll sit there for an hour debating. And what you'll be doing is you'll be battling with the mind. And what ended up happening is it'll just be pride. Well, you know, I got to prove my point and he got to prove his point. No, 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 that's not why we're there. We're not there to do that. We're there to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I don't know if you know this, but the hands and feet of Jesus, they don't talk. <laughs> the hands and feet of Jesus don't talk. They talk, but not like how we talk. They talk by doing things, right? And so when we go there and we're the hands and feet of Jesus, we don't delegate. We don't battle. What we do is we love and we allow who God is through us to convince them through love, right? The Bible says that, that um, perfect love, what? Cast out all fear, right? And so the reason that we have fear to go up to people is because we're not walking up to them in love, okay? We're walking to them in pepper. We're walking to them in flesh. We're, we're walking to them with doctrine and beliefs and scriptures and this and that. Don't misunderstand me, okay? You can use those things, but you walk up to someone in love, okay? Why are you going up to that person? Because you love them, okay? So you only love the guy in the wheelchair? You only love the guy in the crutches? You only love the guy with an arm brace? You only love the guy in the hospital? Wow, you only love them? What about the other ones? What about the ones who ain't in crutches? Do you love them? Hey, what about the ones that are homeless? Do you love them? Hey, what about the one walking down the street? Do you love them? Man, that's kind of weird. They, well, they don't look like they got pain, Pete. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. They have pain. They're homeless. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not present. It's there. It is there. And sometimes when we allow God to be who he is in us, we can just allow healing to flow. You know, I've sat down with a person at the mall. I sat down for maybe 45 minutes. I bought them lunch. I bought them a coffee, some pizza. We sat there and we talked. And here's what's an amazing thing. The wife was just listening the whole time. And I was just talking to her husband and to her kids. And one of, her, uh, one of their kids was talking to me about, you know, the stresses of being a Christian and, and how it's hard and it's hard to model it. And the dad is sitting there and he's like talking about, you know, I'm trying to teach you the right ways to do things. And the mom's just sitting there listening. And you know what I did? I told the dad, I said, you know, this is something you need to know about your daughter. She's just working on her testimony. She's working on her testimony. She's, she, has, she don't have it all figured out. 
It's just a chapter right now. She's only 12 and she's going to grow and she's going to learn and she'll walk this out. And really what she's looking is she's looking for a model to show her what it is that you're actually talking about. And if you could just model to her what it is that you want her to walk in, if you could just model to her, you know, peace, because you say she's, she's out there. Well, if you could model that to her, show her what peace is. And, if you could mo and, and the mother started crying in the middle. She just started weeping, weeping. And I said, what's going on? Why are you crying? And she said, because I've been wanting to understand my daughter. I've been wanting to know why she's doing anything. And she goes, and as you were talking, I felt the Holy Spirit come all over me and saying, don't say anything, just listen. Just listen. And she, and she just started weeping and weeping and weeping. And, we, and anyways, when it was all said and done, the mother, the father, and the daughter were hugging. They were crying. They were holding hands. They were praying. Okay, there wasn't any crutches. There wasn't anybody in a wheelchair. But you know what the hurt was right here? The hurt was that the daughter did not feel loved. She felt rejected by her father, that her father never loved her. And her father told her that he loved her. But he had resentment because she had did something in the past and she couldn't get over it. And when I said, that's just a chapter. And we can't live in that chapter. We have to move on. We have to move on from that chapter and allow healing to come in. To come in and heal the situation with you and your daughter. And God wants to unite you. Okay? I'm not trying to, and, and here's what's crazy. I wasn't trying to open up my Bible and say, you know, the word says this, the word says that. I was allowing the rhema word to come out of me. And I just wanted to bring them together. And I sat down. It was the weirdest thing because I didn't know all that was going on. You know when I found all that was going on? After we were eating pizza and we were talking and the daughter was acting kind of weird. And I said, hey, what, you know, what's going on? And, and she goes, I don't want to talk about it. And then the father started telling me what was going on. And then all that came out. It was amazing because when I left the mall, they were holding hands. The father and the daughter were holding hands. Hands. It was the craziest thing that the Holy Spirit let me see. Okay. That's what it was about. Uh, the Holy Spirit allowed me to see that. Okay. The Holy Spirit's always allowing us to see certain things, but because we don't understand what it is that we're doing, we miss it. It goes right over our heads and we don't understand that God is showing us some things. He's showing us his glory. He's showing us how awesome and how wonderful he really is in the midst of that mess. And if we could just be who we are, who he calls us to be in the middle of that storm of that family, we can bring some things. We can bring some peace. Some, we can bring some little bit of calmness, a little bit of love, a little bit of patience. Right, a little bit. Maybe it just takes a little bit. Maybe it just takes a little bit, the size of a mustard seed. What if it just takes a tiny bit of us knowing what it is we carry that will allow the Holy Spirit to work? And one of the greatest sayings that I say, and I know it's a great saying, is I tell people this, I trust the Holy Spirit in you. I trust the Holy Spirit in you. I know the Holy Spirit will not lead you astray. I know the Holy Spirit will not lie to you. I know the Holy Spirit is for you. I know the Holy Spirit is your, your helper. I know the Holy Spirit was sent to you for a purpose. I know the Holy Spirit is not going to quit. I know that. And because I know that and I carry that, I can actually deal with you on a level that you probably don't understand. And the reality is I don't need you to understand because I know that God is faithful and his word works regardless of what you think. Now, I'm the type of guy that says, look, and I, and, and I know this because this happened to me. I had somebody speak over my life and I rejected all of it. But guess what? It all came to pass. You know why? Because that man believed that God would honor him. That man believed that God would honor his words, that that man would speak these words over my life and would wreck me. And guess what? It did. It took years. It took 10 years for that word to manifest. But when it did, I was on my face. The Lord brought it to my remembrance and it shook me to my core. And he said, these are the kind of men that I'm looking for. Those that would look at a crack addict sitting on the street, dirty, filthy, with a beard, nasty, smelly, bad breath, smells like the street, smells like a garbage can. And a man of God would go up to him and say, ha, no, not today. I'm about to speak over your life and I'm about to wreck everything that you think you're in right now because my word my word right now in the name of Jesus is going to break all that because I'm a son and I'm here for a reason and this stuff's got to stop this stuff's got to go and so guess what uh-uh 
it's got to go. And that's the problem that we're having in the body is we're not teaching what it is we carry. And because we don't understand that, we kind of walk by people and we kind of reject them, look at them a certain way. Like, well, you know, they need Jesus. And, you know, they need prayer. And, oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'll hang around this person or that. No, 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 no. You're the light. And the light has to shine, right? The light has to shine. But because we're not teaching people that we're the light. So, you go up to someone at Walmart. I'm talking 10 years. 10 years ago. I went up to someone at Walmart and I started getting nervous. My heart started beating really fast. My hands started shaking. Right? Because I knew what God could do. And I was really excited. I knew God would heal someone if I could just put my hand on them. I knew God is faithful if I could just do it. I watch people do it on YouTube all day long. I've seen it. I know it's real. If I could just go out there, Lord, if I could just go out there and lay hands on one person, right? And this is where my mental, my mental state was. And so when I went up to someone, right, right away, they told me, no, I'm all right. And I was like, oh, oh, man, it took me an hour just to go up to one guy. And I just felt like I got crushed, right? And I'm like, sweet Jesus, I don't know if I could go through that again. I don't know if I could build the courage up to go up to someone again. Like, I really don't know if I could do that, right? And that's what you're going to battle with, right? That's what you're going to battle with. But here's, here's what I'm, I'm going to give you a tool. You got to understand that the only thing that's going up to them is flesh. And flesh doesn't like it, okay? Flesh doesn't want you to go up to people because they're in their flesh too. And so it's like, Two magnets, right, that are trying to push on each other when it comes to the things of God because the Holy Spirit's trying to get to someone through your flesh and their flesh is pushing away the things of God, right? So it's like the carnal minds of enmity against God. And so there's like these two magnets that are pushing on each other, right? And you have to understand that that's okay when you feel that. That's tension. That's, that's some things that you're feeling, right? And so when you go up to someone and you're feeling those things, understand, Holy Spirit is teaching you something. He's teaching you, look, this feeling may never go away, and that's okay. Your job is not to make this thing go away. Your job is to stand and to confirm my word, regardless of what's in front of you. So if my flesh, if your flesh, pardon me, if your flesh is keeping you from going up to someone, what else is your flesh keeping you from doing? What else is your flesh doing to keep you from seeing the realities of my kingdom? What else is happening? If the flesh is out here with some strangers, and it can't go up to them, How's this flesh acting at home? How's this flesh acting with your family? How's this flesh acting at church? How's this flesh acting at work? Sweet Jesus, if this stuff is not working, there's something that needs to be addressed, right? And so here's the issue. I understood this as time went by that I was being trained. I was growing thick skin. I was learning to be rejected. And you're going to go through a season where you're going to be rejected beyond, beyond your mental capacity. You're going to be rejected to the point where you just want to quit. And that's exactly where Holy Spirit wants you. He wants you to be to that point where you're so tempted about the rejections. Not that he's tempting you, but that you're going to be tempted anyway. You're going to get to that point where you're either going to walk away or you're going to push beyond it. And if you don't push beyond it, you went as far as you could go. That's as far as you're going to go. Because walls are there for a reason. And them walls are there to keep flesh out. Holy Spirit doesn't worry about walls. Look, you're, when you're in the Spirit, you don't worry about walls. You don't have mental walls. You don't have walls at all. Because the only thing that hits walls is flesh. But when you're in the Holy Spirit, when you're walking in the Spirit, those walls mean nothing to you. You go right through them. Look, oh, I feel like I'm having tension. <laughs> Well, guess what? I'm going to walk right through that tension. Guess what? Because you have to, at some point, deal with the storm that's happening. And we don't ever address, uh, excuse me, address the storm that's happening when you're going up to someone. Look, Jesus told the disciples to cross to the other side. Right? Do you remember that? In the middle of them crossing, now Jesus said, we're going to the other side, which means we're going to make it to the other side. That's what he's saying. Hey, we're going to go to the other side. So they get in the boat. Okay, so I want you to See yourself this way. When you're going up to someone, Jesus is saying, you're going to go up to that person, right? We're going to that person. Why? Because they need what you carry. What we carry, they need. So we're going to go up to that person, okay? So here you go. You start working towards that person. And right before you get there, thunder, 
rain, the boat, the rock, and oh shoot, I'm going to perish up in this piece because I don't know what I'm going to do. And here's what you do. Here's what you do in your mental capacity in the carnal realities of Pepper. You shake Jesus and you're like, do you not care that I'm going to perish? Do you not care if I re get rejected? Do you not care what I'm going through? Do you not? No, but here's what he's saying. Shh. Be still. Be still. Right? And you, you go through it. Look, the storm is going to hit. But at some point, the storm is going to stop. Okay? You got to remember that what you carry is a lot stronger than the storm. What you carry has power over the storm. Okay? So the storm that you're dealing with when you're going up to someone, it's supposed to be there. Okay, that storm is supposed to be there. It's not just going to go away. Okay, if Jesus was in the boat, the storm hits, he's still there. But the only difference is Jesus is sleeping. He's sleeping. He's calm. He's not afraid. Why? Because he understands he's going to where he said he's going. And that's to the other side. Now, a lot of believers will sit right there in the middle. Right? And that's, that's why you get most of these doctrines that, you know, God doesn't heal anymore. Because when Jesus sent them to someone... They laid hands on someone, right? And nothing manifested. And they said, does it work? That's because there's more to the story. We don't ever go beyond that, okay? There's more to that story, okay? There's more that happens when you get to the other side, okay? But we don't ever talk about that. So I'm going to stop here. So the amazing thing that you need to understand, when they come back, Jesus sends them back across the same, same sea. But this time Jesus isn't with them. And a storm hits, and it's nighttime, and they're toiling, right? And they're by themselves. Same thing, guys. Look, Jesus is trying to teach you something. Holy Spirit is trying to teach you how to confront some fear. And that fear is going up to people. That fear is rejection. That fear is what they're going to say, what they're going to think. That fear is what your wife's going to think, what your kid's going to think, what your job's going to think, what everybody else is going to say. You might lose your job. And look, that fear is not going to go away, okay? There's a difference between having fear and living in fear, okay? And it says perfect love casts out all fear. It doesn't mean that fear isn't present because fear is present. Fear is always present, but you need to cast out fear. Cast it out of you. The fear is still there, but that doesn't mean it has to be in you, okay? The fear can be out here. Look, you can pat, you can go through some things that are scary, but it doesn't mean it has to stop you, okay? What will stop you is if you allow that fear to come in, right? Don't allow that fear to come in. Cast it out and say, you know what? I am scared, but guess what? I'm still going to do it. I am scared, but I'm still going to go. I am scared. But look, you could tell yourself all day long that you're not scared. And the reality is that you're going to get scared. Okay. To say that you're not scared and you are scared, you're just lying to yourself. There's some point that you are going to get scared. Look, every time I teach every time I get on a plane, every time I travel, I get scared, okay? Not that I live in fear, but it's just because I'm learning some things, okay? I'm learning some things that I'm dealing with. It doesn't mean they're not present. It just means I'm learning to rely on Holy Spirit in the middle of this stuff. I'm learning to talk to Him about it. I'm learning to say, okay, Holy Spirit, why am I feeling this? How can you help me overcome what I'm dealing with? Because obviously, it's here. And yes, I have YouTube videos. Yes, I travel the world. Yes, I have a school. Yes, I do all these things. But guess what? I still get fear. Okay? But it doesn't mean that it's in me. It just means things are happening and fear is trying to invade me. But it can't come in because perfect love casts out all fear. So you got to knock those things down, take those thoughts, cap them, and say, uh-uh. No. And you move forward. And here's what's crazy. Peter understood this because, look, there's a lot of you in a boat when you're laying hands on the sick. There's a lot of you in a boat. And a lot of you want to get out of the boat. This is what this is all about. This is about you getting out of the boat, going up to someone, and laying hands on them. This is what this whole video is about. It's about you getting out of a boat and walking on water. Okay, Walking on water only works when Jesus is with you. Okay, That's what all this is about. A lot of us don't want to do it in Jesus. We don't want to do it in Christ. We want to do it in Peter. <laughs> you can't do it in Peter. You have to do it in Christ. And that's what this whole video is about. When I say perfect love casts out all fear, Jesus is perfect love. You get in Jesus. You live in Jesus. You walk this out in Jesus. And when you go up to someone, you speak in the spirit of 
Jesus. You address that person in the name of Jesus. You treat them as a brother in Christ. You treat them as they are sons of the living God. Whether they're saved or not, you treat, you, you still treat them that way because you want to bring them with the hopes that they'll come to Christ, right? You don't treat them different, okay? You treat them like sons of God who don't know who they are, who are lost, and you've come to bring them back home to Papa. That's what it's all about. That's what the gospel is all about, okay? So, how do you get out of the boat, Pete? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to get out of the boat and how to battle the mental issues that are going to come with it and have the mental capacity to grow opposed to start sinking, start drowning, start dog paddling, and now you're swimming back to the boat. I don't want you to swim back to the boat, okay? I want you to move forward and get to the dry land because on that dry land is your next mission, okay? You don't get stuck in the middle of a lake, okay? You don't do that. You don't get stuck in the middle of the ocean. You got to get to where Jesus says you're going. He says, we're going to the other side. We're going over there. He sent them. And that's what this is all about. That's called the Great Commission. And if you can't get past this thing, I don't care what you're doing. Look, hear me out. If you don't get past this thing, I don't care if you're serving breakfast. I don't care if you're mowing lawns. I don't care if you're painting fences. I don't care if you're doing a Bible study. I don't care if you're out there teaching. I don't care if you're out there traveling the world. I don't care if you're casting out devils. I don't care if you're healing the sick, raising the dead. If you're doing it all out of this, you don't understand why Jesus came. He came to change you, right? Change you. And the reality is a lot of us don't understand what that change is. So we never walk out the change. We walk out the works. We walk out the fruits. But we never understand why he came to live inside of us. It wasn't so you could do stuff. You're going to do that anyway. Look, the scripture says it. Look, look, the disciples weren't even born again. And they were healing the sick. Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. They were still, they, they were healing the sick. Here's another one. Uh, we seen people casting out demons in your name. And they didn't follow. They didn't follow you, they didn't follow us, so we told them to stop. Okay, these guys that were casting out demons weren't even born again, didn't have the Holy Spirit, and they didn't follow Jesus. They were casting out demons. So if they can cast out demons and they weren't following Jesus and they could do miracles, how many people do you know in the body don't follow Jesus and still do the miracles and still cast out demons and still do all these things, but never really understood the reason why Jesus came was so we could live in him and function out of that place. But we don't teach people to function out of that place. We teach them to function out of their authority, out of their carnal place. And don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand. Just like Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us. So I'm not telling these people to stop. They can go out there and they can go heal the sick. They can raise the dead. They can cleanse the lepers. They can cast out devils. But here's the thing. They're doing it in the flesh. And when they're doing it in the flesh, they get angry. They get mad. They cause division. Okay? They, they get irritated. Right? They shake people off. They get tired. They don't want to deal with people. They, they, they function out of a carnal Christianity. They're trying to control. They're trying to do certain things that are not supposed to be done in the spirit. And this is an amazing thing because you can go up to a man of God and try to correct them. Oh, I don't need no correction from you. Hey, hold up. Hold up. Why are you getting so mad? Well, who are you? Who are you? We're sons. We're brothers. We should be able to talk. Why are you getting mad? Oh, don't lay hands on them. That's my congregation. Oh, really? That's carnal Christianity right there. Who told you to? what church you from? There's only one church. What you talking about? There's only one church. You're talking what denomination I'm from. That's what you're asking. I don't know about all that. I, my father doesn't even talk about that. Why am I going to talk about that? I, you know how many men of God tell me that? What church you from? Why are you in here laying hands on the sick? Because he's sick. Oh, well, you know, you got to go through training. You're training? Yeah, well, I didn't see anybody laying hands on anybody. So when do you do this training? Oh, well, we do it once a month. Well, train now. Look, they're all hurting. They're sick. I'm watching. We're all watching. Oh, that ain't how we do things. Well, okay, my bad. But that this is how Jesus does it. So I get you. And I'm gonna try to knock you. And I don't want to get you upset. But the reality is these people are hurting. And I'm more worried about them than what you're thinking. So how about we go lay hands on them outside since it's your church. So let's go outside and lay hands on them. Can we do that? 
Can we take them outside? Can we do that? Because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the hurting and the lost and the broken. That's what it's about. But if you're walking this out in the corner of Christianity, it won't be about that. It'll be about what you want done and how you want things done. And what end up happening is you'll cause division. And you want to cause division. You want to unite the fight. Unite the fight and die to what's right. That's the slogan that I'm using. You'll be seeing it. You'll be seeing it. If you see the logo, that's what it is. It's unite the fight. You'll see it. It's coming out. Unite the fight. You know what that means? I'm not worried about what doctrine you're under. I'm not worried about what church you go to. I don't care what you think or what you believe. Let's go lay hands on these cats. Let's go feed these guys. Let's go help these guys. Let's do that. Let's unite the fight. Tell you what, your fight is not with me. Your fight is not with me, okay? It's with the enemy. We all have one enemy, okay? His name is Satan, the devil, Lucifer. That's our enemy. I'm not your enemy, man. We're, we're supposed to be uniting together and going out there and crushing the enemy together. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But because we don't understand what it is that Jesus came to do. Oh, sweet Lord. Oh, sweet Jesus, unite the fight, man. Unite the fight. That's what I'm about. So anyways, so you go up to someone, you start getting nervous. You start realizing this is your flesh doing that. This is your flesh doing it. It's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't afraid. It's your flesh. Now remember, and, and, and hear me out. Here we go. You do no, you you do not want you do you do not want pepper laying hands on people. You don't want that. You don't want pepper out there ministering. Please don't don't let pepper lay hands on people. Don't let pepper try to convince them that you're right and they're wrong. Don't let pepper do that. Don't let pepper drag you into a fight. That's not why you're there. You're there to love them and bring them. To Jesus. But Pepper's not going to like that. Pepper's going to hate that. Man, as soon as somebody says, I don't believe that, you're going to feel Pepper rise up. And that very thing that is Pepper, which is your flesh, is the very thing that starts getting nervous. It starts sweating. It starts shaking. Your voice starts going like this. You don't know what to say. You start tongue twisting. Right? Because it doesn't want to go up to someone in the name of Jesus. That's why a lot of people train Pepper to read certain things, you know, the Roman road, I'm misunderstand, there's nothing wrong with it, but they train Pepper to go up to people and lead them to Jesus and write down how many people came to Jesus and how many people recommitted. And Pepper goes, look how many people we went up to today. I led five people to the Lord. And then you'd be like, well, who are you in Christ? What do you mean? Well, who are you? Like, well, I'm a Christian. Okay, well, um, who are you? Well, what do you mean? Well, are, are you a carnal Christian or are you walking in the spirit? Well, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, so what did you give them? Well, I asked them if they love the Lord and if they want to give their life to him. Okay, what's that look like? Well, I gave them a number to go to a church. Okay, which church? The church I go to. Okay, do they know who they are at your church? What do you mean? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So basically, you're going to train them to be like you, right, who don't know who they are in Jesus, they're just going to basically struggle the rest of their life and live in the carnal realities of the kingdom of God. And they're going to go in circles and they're going to walk in a powerless gospel and they're going to get frustrated and they're going to get angry and their whole family and everything's going to struggle. And they're going to go up, up and down and they don't know who they are. And then they're going to go to church. They're going to praise God. And then they're going to go bring some other people and they're going to bring them back to church. But they'll never tell them who they are either. So now we've got a bunch of people struggling in the church. Never walking in the realities of the kingdom of God. But as long as we keep bringing people back, we'll, we'll be able to give them... Scripture. <laughs> Look, I got nothing against giving people scripture, but you have to tell them who they are, right? And we have a lot of Christians going out there to just win people to the kingdom, and they're not even in the kingdom mentally, physically, or emotionally. Like, they're not, they don't even know what the kingdom is, right? A lot of people think that the kingdom is when we die, we go into the kingdom. No, your job is to bring the kingdom here. So what does the kingdom look like now? What do you mean, Pete? Oh, sweet Jesus. That's the stuff I'm talking about. You got to know what the kingdom is. Jesus went around preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. He didn't go around preaching and teaching the fellowship and the Bible studies and the this and that. Don't misunderstand me. Now, I go to a church. 
I go to the Father's house with Quentin Moore in Hutchinson, Kansas. So I'm not knocking a church because I understand, I understand authority, okay? So I'm under it because I understand it. And because I understand it, I'm under it, okay? And I submit to an authority because I walk in authority. And for those who don't submit under authority and want to walk in it, they don't understand how authority works. Because even Jesus submitted himself to the authority of the Father. And even the twelve humbled themselves to the authority of Jesus. And then those that followed humbled themselves. It goes all the way down, guys. You have to have a pastor or someone that you can lock with and say, let's walk this out together. If you can't find one, look for one. Because you have to have accountability in your life. You can't get to the point where it's all about no, you got to have someone that's around you that says, hey, Pete, come here. Come on, come here. Let me, let me reel you in a little bit. Okay, what's going on? Well, you know, what's going on here? Why, why'd you say this? And why are you acting like this? And how come you this? And how, oh, oh, well, you know, that's called accountability, right? And if people can't handle accountability, they shouldn't be walking in, in the power of God. Because the power of God, it, it demands respect. It demands Oh, yes, I'm still on. I don't know what just happened. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I hit this button because somebody, they inbox me when they know I'm on Facebook Live and they're like, come on, don't inbox me. I'm in the middle of a teaching here. <laughs> so, hear me out. I understood this, guys, because um, I'm going to tell you why I tell you that you need to have a pastor or someone to hold you accountable. Because... A lot of people that walk in the kingdom of God, they will go into other doctrines because the first thing that you learn is honor, okay? Honor, okay? A lot of people don't want to walk in honor, okay? It's hard to honor someone when they don't understand honor, okay? When I'm talking about when someone doesn't understand honor, how can they honor someone? That's what I'm talking about. Honor's huge. Another word for honor is respect, okay? respect okay respect we respect each other okay we don't do things to each other that make us look crazy okay that's what honor is all about that's why i tell people you need a pastor to teach you honor to teach you how to humble yourself to teach you how to work with other people to teach you how to just not to get bigger than what you claim yourself out to be man it's called humility guys and it's kind of hard to humble yourself when you don't have anybody around you. You don't want yes men around you. You want people around you to hold you accountable. And I get it, right? So that's why I tell people, if you want to walk in the things of God, you got to find some people that will that'll ground you, that will hold you, that will hold you accountable to some stuff, man. Right? And I struggle with it. We all struggle with it. Because the reality is we're wrapped in this flesh. And even though it's dead, okay, and even though it's dead, Pepper still talks, and Pepper will still say things, and Pepper will try to convince you of some things, and you got to learn to shut that stuff down, man. You got to learn to close it down. And so, I've always had a pastor. I've always had it. Even when I went, when I came from Great Bend, I was with Pastor Dozier. I was there eight years, right? And when I left that church, I asked for a letter of recommendation to come to this church. And I did that, and I sat down with my pastor, and I gave him the letter, and I explained to him who I am and what I'm about, because I understand honor. Right. And so that's how I came in. And if I ever leave, I'll do the same thing. But that's because that's what I carry. OK, it isn't just about laying hands on the sick. It's about honoring what it is you carry. OK, and if what it is you carry doesn't doesn't teach you to honor, you're walking this thing out carnally. OK, and that's one of the things that I talk to people the most. What if you come on, dude? <clears throat> so I'll give an example. I'll give an example of honor. OK. Honor is something that the Holy Spirit will do. Holy Spirit will honor you because he doesn't know how not to honor you. Okay? So if you don't go up to someone, he won't make you. And if you don't lay hands on someone, he won't make you. He won't do it. He won't make you do anything. He'll tell you to do it. But if you don't do it, that's on you. And because he honors you so much, he won't do anything. He'll sit there and just wait until you're ready. Now, he would teach you and train you through that time to honor him. But he can't give honor. You can't receive honor till you give it. So Holy Spirit's always honoring you because he's honoring God's word. So it's not about you when you're out there laying hands on the sick. It's about him. And everything that you see when you lay hands on the sick is not about you. It's about Holy Spirit honoring God. 
And everything that you see is about who God is. It's not about who you are, okay? It's about who God is. And that's the problem that we run into with those who want to lay hands on the sick. They try to get a name for themselves, and I get it because we all go through it. We want to get a name for ourselves. We want to go out there. We want to be the big man of God. We want to have the, the, the big healing conferences, the big services. We want, you know, big crowds, big churches, and I've been through that, okay? And I walked away from all that. I, that's the thing that I do not want. I don't want that, okay? If God puts it on me, that's one thing, but I'm not chasing that. I'm chasing the heart of God. That's what I'm chasing. I'm chasing honoring God's word and his kingdom. That is what I'm chasing more than anything else. Everything else is, is, is hogwash to me if I don't understand what. That's crazy. I just put Cyrus. I just declined Cyrus's call. Cyrus is number 79 from the Denver Broncos. He's actually, he just tried to call me. I mean, I'll, if you're on here, Cyrus, I'll call you back. Forgive me, man. I'm in the middle of a teaching, but I'll call you back. Um, so it's all about honoring, honoring God. And look, God will honor his word. And what he wants to teach you is for you to honor his word. Because that's how Holy Spirit works. When you lay hands on the sick, that's Holy Spirit honoring God's word. Because you laid hands on someone honoring Holy Spirit. And because that, that honors a mutual honor, we see things, but we don't understand that, right? And so how do we push through this wall, okay? First of all, your flesh doesn't want to honor Holy Spirit, okay? Pepper doesn't want to honor Holy Spirit, doesn't know how, okay? So you have to teach your flesh to shut up. You have to teach your flesh to get over it, okay? Holy Spirit is not going to teach you how to take your thoughts captive, okay? You have to take your thoughts captive, okay? Holy Spirit is not going to renew your mind for you, okay? You have to renew that carnal thing because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, which means it's not going to listen to the Holy Spirit, but it will listen to you because you are in this body and you are taking dominion over this flesh and you are making your flesh listen, right? That's the only difference, but we don't teach this, okay? We don't teach this. So you take those thoughts captive. God is not going to come down again in Jesus and shake your head and be like, stop thinking that. Think this. Think this. No, he's not going to do that, okay? That's why we read our word. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we do all the things that the scriptures ask us to do. Because what we're doing is we're training a carnal part of us that's an enmity against God to submit to the realities of God, even though it does not want to do it, okay? You can train your mind. You can train it. You can be renewed in the spirit of your mind and bring your mind to a place where it just has to listen. And that's what all this is about. And I know it's possible. You know how I know? Because I walk it out. Because I live there. That's how I know it's possible. See, it's one thing to speak it in theory. It's another thing to actually live there. And I live there. And I know it's possible because I live it out on a daily. I have my ups and downs just like anybody else. But it is possible. It's very possible. How do I know? Because 10 years ago, I had issues with the things I don't have issues with now. And we are growing. Look, it's just a chapter. And as you grow, that chapter is going to change. And the amazing thing about the chapter that changes is you're going from glory to glory to glory to glory. And you're going from chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter. Here's the problem. You have to live out that chapter. A lot of us don't want to live those chapters out because we think they're attacks of the enemy. We think it's the devil trying to stop us. No, these things are storms that are hitting you. And because you live in the flesh, you don't understand that you're being trained by the circumstances. That's why he says that he'll take those things, right? He'll turn everything that's bad into good. And how do you do that? That's because everything that's happened to you that's bad, you will renew your mind and use it for good right? And that's what it is that you're learning to do. So when you go up to someone and your body's shaking and you're nervous and it's saying, oh, you're going to look stupid. No, 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 no. The flesh is going to look stupid and I don't live in the flesh. Romans chapter eight, I live in the spirit. So no, I'm not going to look stupid. You're going to look stupid. I'm not going to look stupid because I'm crowned in glory with Jesus. So guess what? You going to look stupid. So you walk over there because you the mule. This is the mule, right? You make that mule go. 
Come on, mule. Let's go. Uh-uh. I don't want to go. Oh, you going to go because you carrying Jesus, right? So the mule don't want to go. Hey, this is when he goes into Jerusalem. It's the mule. Yeah, the mule loves it when you're laying down the palms, right? The mule loves it when people are clapping and cheering like, Woo, did you see that? Oh, the mule loves it. Oh, the mule loves that, boy. Woo, because the mule thinks it's for him. No, 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 no. Mule, it's not for you. It's for Jesus. And Jesus rides the mule. And I hate to tell you this. I hate to tell you this. When you live in Pepper, you the mule. Right? You the mule. And all you're doing is you just whooping that mule into submission. Hey, because you dead. You a dead mule. You take this spirit where it needs to go. You don't want to go? That's okay. I'll just whip you a little harder. I'll make you go. I don't want to go. I'll make you go. Why? Because I own you. Because Jesus paid a price for you. And some mules are a little stubborn and a little more thick-headed than other mules. But it's okay. Because even a mule can be trained. Even a mule can be trained, right? And so what we're doing is we're learning to take these feelings, okay? These feelings, these thoughts. Look, hear me out. You are carrying the presence of the living God. You, got, you can't forget that. You're not going to allow this thing. This flesh, this carnal thing that's wrapped around you to keep the king of kings from going up to someone. Oh, no, 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 no. That's ridiculous. How are you going to let this, that Jesus nailed to the cross, tell you what you can and can't do? Make you feel things. No, 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 no. See, see, that's, that's a whole nother topic, okay? There's a reality that you need to understand. And this is for every believer that's listening. There's a reality in Christ that bends everything that you think you're struggling with. There's a point where this thing just snaps, okay? And, and the enemy knows that. And the enemy will do everything in his power to hide this truth from you. It'll hide this everywhere. It'll do everything in his power to keep your mind from looking at Jesus, I'm telling you. Because everything in Jesus is so amazing and so powerful and so refreshing when it comes to the realities of the kingdom of God that it'll set you free, man. It'll set you free from yourself. It'll set you free from all kinds of thoughts. It'll set you free from your neighbors, from emotions, from anger, from that guy that hates you, from your mother-in-law that can't stand you. It'll set you free from all that stuff. Why? Because the mule... It's going to get whipped no matter what. So you might as well whip that thing into submission now, right? So I tell people this. When you're going up to someone, you see that? Yeah. Why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you doing that? Why are you letting your mule do that to you? Uh-uh. No. You, you, you get a whole, look, you grab them reins and you make that mule go over there. You, you make it. Why? Because it's carrying the presence of the living God. And that mule doesn't want to do it. And it wasn't created to to do it, okay? It was created to submit. It was created to submit to the power of God. And it forgot that. So you got to remind it. You got to remind it. You got to remind it of what it's here for. It's here to get the spirit of the living God from here to that guy. From here to that person. From here to that table. From here to that person. But a lot of us don't understand that. Because we think it's all about a prayer. We think it's all about bringing them to Jesus by convincing them. No, how about... How about instead of bringing them to Jesus, you take Jesus to them and watch what happens when Jesus shows up. See, when Jesus shows up, the enemy bows. When Jesus shows up, people chase Jesus. When Jesus shows up, there's healing. When Jesus shows up, all the things that their heart desires will open up to the things of God. And God will touch them and do all the things he wanted to do. But when the mule shows up, <laughs> the mule shows up, boy. You don't want to give them the mule. No, 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 no. You don't want to give them pepper, man. So what do you do? Here's what you do. When you're going up to someone, you have to understand that that thing that's keeping you from going up to someone is not you. That is the old you who's stuck in his ways. Okay? The old you is dead. Okay? The issues that you're having are habits that, you, that the old you created. The old you created some nasty habits. That's what renewing your mind is. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you, you grew into some nasty habits, okay? That's why I tell Christians that are born again, that are sons of God, you don't have a sin issue, 
Okay? You 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 have you have an issue with habits. You have habit issues. That's a that's a you don't have a sin habit. You have a habit habit. And you need to get rid of it and learn new habits, right? And they say, what are you saying, Pete, that you don't sin? I didn't say that. What I'm saying is when you're in the mule, the mule's going to make a mess. What I'm saying is when you're in pepper, you're going to do things that you're not supposed to be doing. So am I saying that you don't, don't, you don't sin? What I'm saying is when you're in the flesh, you're going to do things that you never even thought you could do, that you're not supposed to be doing. So the key is not to live in pepper, to get in Christ. So I tell people, look, don't worry about whether you can sin or not. That's the wrong question. You need to ask whether you can stay in Christ or not. That's the question you need to be asking because in that other question, nobody benefits from that. Ask this question and you're going to benefit. Why? Because the question is, how long can you stay in Christ? What can I do to get in Christ? How, how can I stay here longer? How can I stand here stronger? How can I grow here? How can I stay here? How can I live here? You know why we have an issue with that? Because we don't teach people they're in Christ. We don't teach people who they are. So how in the heck, when I say heck, that's exactly what it is. How in the heck are we supposed to grow if we ain't even in the tree yet, mentally, physically, and emotionally, we over here. Oh, you need to grow in Christ, but he's over there and you over here. You know, he can't stand you, but he loves you. But, you know, he's he going to bless you today, but tomorrow he's going to kill you. He, he wants you to prosper. You're so prosper, but tomorrow he's going to send a flood and a tsunami. He's going to kill everybody. He might send an earthquake to you. So, you know, he loves you, but maybe that earthquake could teach you a lesson if it crushes your whole family and kills you all right that's that's the kind of stuff i'm talking about right there's a lot of people that believe that stuff because they're they're, they're wrapped in this carnal thing the the spirit of the living god wants everyone everyone to come to jesus everyone there's not one person that the holy spirit doesn't think about because the holy spirit is trying to honor and is honoring what jesus did we forget that right it's not about what you're doing it's about what he's done when you go up to someone to lay hands on them, it's not about you. It's about what Jesus has done and given you the ability through the Holy Spirit so you can take that flesh captive because he nailed it to the cross so you can walk up to that person and take those thoughts captive, right? And take this flesh captive and take the realities of this world captive and allow the kingdom to just explode all over this person and set them free and give them the things that God has for them. You're a treasure chest in Christ. You got so much to offer. The Holy Spirit has so much to give you. But because we're not teaching people this stuff, we kind of just hope they just, you know, kind of scrape by. No, nah, man. No, nah, no. Nah, that ain't going to happen. So, when you go up to someone, take those thoughts captive. You make your body do it. Why? Because you're training. You're training for raining, man. You're training. You're training. You're practicing. What are you practicing? You're practicing to take these thoughts captive. You're practicing to fight these emotions. You're practicing to get your stuff together. You're practicing to teach your flesh. You're going to do it. And guess what? We're going to go practice. That's funny. Because you, you can go to the gym all week long. Right? You can go out on a diet. You can go on a fast. You can put things down. Man, it's funny. You can train your body to go to work at 4 in the morning. You train your body. Well, because I have to do these things. No, 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 no. You have to make your body submit. You have to make it bow to the name of Jesus. You have to make it do the things that Jesus called you to do. That's what you have to do. That's funny how Pharaoh will get you to do it. Pharaoh will get your body and build a wall. Pharaoh will get your body and build a car. Pharaoh will get your body to build a fence. Pharaoh will have you digging a ditch. Pharaoh will have your body over there cutting meat. Pharaoh will have you over there cutting, cutting things and limbs and mowing lawns and pooping you know scooping poop and man pharaoh have you doing all kinds of stuff you never thought you could do why because pharaoh tells your flesh what to do that's why because pharaoh is the god of this world and your your flesh was born in this world and it's not going to change its mind just because you, you you became born again all of a sudden now it's just going to decide to line up with god i don't think so i don't think so that's not how it works okay but that's funny. You'll give your whole life to destroying your body to do what another man tells you to do. But when God tells you to do something, you can't do it. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. I know guys that have learned things through trades. They've learned to be electricians. They've learned to be mechanics. They've learned to build things. They've built bridges. You got people that fly planes. You got people that drive tanks. You got people that learn all kinds of stuff. But when you have to teach them, hey, go up to this guy. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> what? You don't understand what you carry, son. You can do it. You just don't want to do it because your flesh is telling you, I don't want to do it. And you think it's you. 
You think it's you saying I don't want to do it. No, it's your flesh telling you you don't want to do it. But because you don't know the difference between flesh and spirit, you think it's you. So now your flesh is telling you what to do. And then you're wondering why you're going in circles and you can't lay hands on somebody. And then when you do lay hands on somebody and don't see anything, your flesh will say, See? I told you nothing was going to happen. And then you'll be like, Well, man, I wonder why nothing happened. And then he think it's Holy Spirit saying that. Holy Spirit it would never say that. Holy Spirit would never say that what you just did didn't work. Holy Spirit will honor God's word. Not contradict it. Hear me out. We as sons of God, we're not being trained who we are and we're contradicting the word of God all day long. All day long we're contradicting it. All day long. And then we wonder why we don't see anything. Hey, scripture tell you, a double-minded man won't receive anything he asks for. He won't. But you know how much of us uh, are being trained in the double-minded mindset? All of us. The majority of us. Excuse me. But there's a small group that will refuse to bow to the lies of the world. We refuse. We refuse to bow to it. I lay hands on someone and say, look, nothing happened. Oh, a lot happened. Well, I didn't see nothing. Well, that's because you're looking out of your carnal eyes and your carnal eyes can't see. Well, what am I supposed to see? What do you mean, what are you supposed to see? You didn't see what happened? You didn't see what just happened? No, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see what happened, Pete. What just happened? Okay, let me share what manifested. You ready? The guy would be like, all right. What happened, Pete? You lay hands on that shoulder, press the left foot shoulder, pain still. Right? You said God's faithful, his word's faithful. Okay, that guy just left with pain, Pete. You, you lying. They ain't not, I didn't see nothing manifest. See, you're looking out of your carnal eyes. Let me tell you what manifested. See, the problem is a lot of us are looking for a manifestation out there. I don't function like that. I want the manifestation to come out of here, right? I was manifesting the minute I went up to that person. It wasn't about their arm or their healing manifesting. It was about the word of God manifesting in me. I laid hands on them, right? I laid hands on them and I didn't let this thing talk me out of what it is that God said, right? So guess what? I'm manifesting the whole time. My mind's saying this ain't going to work and I'm like, shut up. You're my carnal mind and you have no say. Oh, well, it's not going to work. Shut up. It is going to work. The word of God is powerful. And I'm not doing this because you want to do it. I'm doing this because the Holy Spirit is asking me to. And I'm being trained. And I'm going to honor God's word. Well, what if nothing happens? Right? That's what my mind's saying. I say, shut up. It's already happening. The minute that I lay my hands on them, the word of God is already moving. What do you mean, Pete? You don't understand. The minute that I chose to walk across the street, I was already manifesting. The minute that I laid my hands on them, I was already manifesting. The minute my mind was saying, hey, this ain't true, I was already manifesting. The minute this person walked away and they're still limping, guess what? I'm still manifesting because I'm still saying God is still faithful to his word even though I don't see it. So I walk away manifesting a son and I say, you know what, God, your word is always faithful even if I don't see it and I will honor your word and I'm not going to listen to the realities of that flesh. I'm not going to listen to the realities of my mind. I'm not going to listen to the reality of this clown's mouth. I want to honor your word because we honor your word. We don't question it. So guess what? I manifested all over the place. What you talking about? You didn't see manifestation. You didn't see the stuff I was struggling with in here. You didn't see the victory I was getting in here. You didn't see the victory in me crossing the street. You didn't see the victory in me believing God's word. You didn't see the victory. And watch this. I'm going to go up to somebody else. Another victory. Because I didn't see it over there. I don't care. It's not about what I'm seeing. It's about who I am. I'm not doing anything anything it's who i am and that's why i do it whether i see it or don't see it is irrelevant i'm a son of god and sons of god honor god oh sweet jesus what you been doing the whole time what you been doing the whole time Shh, man you want to see manifestation so does god so does God. Start manifesting. But it's funny. Because sure as heck, people manifest demons all day long. You didn't know that? Effortlessly. You didn't know that? People manifest demons effortlessly. They're, they manifest demons effortlessly. Well, heck, we can manifest sons effortlessly too. But since we've been training people, they manifest demons. How in the heck are we going to have them manifesting sons if we don't ever talk about that? Oh, yeah, I forgot. You haven't told them they're sons yet. That's why. You haven't told them they're sons yet. How can they manifest a son 
If you're not even telling them they're sons, you're telling them God still hates them. God still, he don't even know what to think yet. How are, you, how are they going to manifest sons if you ain't even told them they're sons yet? You can't manifest what it is they don't know. Heck, all you've been calling them a sinner the whole time. That's why they've been manifesting sin their whole life. Because you've been calling them a sinner since day one. And then you wonder why they're not manifesting the kingdom of God. They're only going to manifest what they believe. And if they believe they're sinners, that's all they're going to manifest. And if they believe they're demon-possessed, that's all they're going to manifest. And if they believe they can't heal the sick, that's all they're going to manifest. And if they can't believe they can't lose weight, that's all they're going to manifest. If they can't believe they can get in their word, they ain't going to read their word. If they can't believe they're good or bad or this or... It doesn't matter. As a man believes in his heart, so he is. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <sighs> So, why am I telling you this? <laughs> Cyrus, I gotta call Cyrus. I gotta call him. So, anyways, guys, um, I just made a little quick video, guys. But guys, hear me out. When you're out there, when you're out there, don't worry about what you're dealing with mentally. Jesus already paid for that. Don't worry about what you're worrying about. Jesus already paid for that. Don't worry about what you're struggling with. Jesus already paid for that. Walk in Jesus. And all you're doing is training. You're training to bring those things captive. You're training to bring those things to submission. You're training. You are training every day of your life. This is practice. Practice who you are. Don't practice who you're not. And we're going to talk about on the next video about manifestation, about when we see it and when we don't see it. Right? Right now we're going to address this. This is what we need to address first. This is video one, number one. Address this. Address this. Address who you are. Address that. Address that first. Because I want to make sure it comes out of the right place. Right? I don't just want you laying hands on people. Okay? I want you to understand why you're laying hands on people. And why miracles will happen. And why it will flow. You need to understand that first. You need to understand who you are. Because I want who you are out there. Not who you're not. We don't need a kingdom divided. Okay, we need one standing strong. And the only way we can do that is we understand who we are in Christ. Right? So the next video I'll do is talking about manifestation. If you see it, if you don't see it, how do you go from there? Right? But I want to challenge you. Just go out there. It's not about you. It's about him. Miracles happen because of his faithfulness. And all you're doing is going up to people. Maybe he's challenging you about your faithfulness. Maybe God wants to see how faithful you are, regardless of what you see. Maybe it's not about what you see. Maybe it's about you just honoring God's word. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe it's about you just going out there. Maybe it's about you not asking questions, why and why not. Maybe it's about you just in doing it because you love God, right? And the outcome's not yours anyway. It's never our outcome. It's always his outcome. And when you understand that, when you understand that God is doing something, he's always doing something. And he's not doing it how you think. And I know I'm not saying don't stand there and fight for it. If you want to fight for it, you stand there and you lay hands on it until you get tired. Right? So you it gives away, till it busts, till it breaks, till it moves. But if for some reason you don't see manifestation, doesn't mean it's not moving. It's always moving. God's word moves everything. Right? You gotta remember that. Even when you walk away, don't ever walk away saying it didn't work. Don't do that. Don't do that. When you plant a word in someone, when you lay hands on someone, you don't ever walk away saying it didn't work. Because what you just did is you just said something in faith. And you just turned it into doubt and you just walked away. Ain't no seed going to grow in that. You can't plant a seed and then yank it out. You got to leave it in there. And you got to keep watering that thing. You got to still, still believe and speak and trust God. That what you said and when you laid hands, that it's still going to manifest. It's still going to happen. And it may not even happen under your watch. I may lay hands on that person a year from now and I'll see it. But guess what? It's not about what I see because we're the body. Every healing that I've seen, you've all been a part of it because we're the body. We've all been a part of it because it's the Holy Spirit in us doing it, guys. So every healing that you've seen on YouTube, you've been a part of that. You've been a part of that because we're the body. And what you don't see, I'll see because we're a body. And that's why I say just always say God's word always works. It always works. Look, we pray for our family members for years, right? We prayed for my sister-in-law for six years. She was a drug addict and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we believed and we believed and we believed and we believed and we believed. Never once did we say, she ain't going to come to Jesus. 
We never once said, oh, because we prayed over her and she didn't come to Jesus, it didn't work. You know, all the times we ministered to her, we didn't say, oh, it didn't work. All the times we told her to, to, to give her life to Jesus and, and say the sinner's prayer and she did, we, didn't, we never said it didn't work. We knew it worked. But it took six years for that thing to manifest. Six years. Because we believe that God's word works. So let's take the same logic when you lay hands on someone who's sick. It still works. Look, the same faith, hear me out. The same faith that saves you is the same faith that heals you. It's the same. It's not different, okay? Because it's a person. It's a person, guys. Hear me out. Healing is a person. It's not an event, okay? Forgiveness is a person. It's not an event. Raising the dead is a person. It's not an event. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, okay? Which means it's not an event. The problem is we're teaching people to walk out events. Don't walk out events. Walk out the person, and you got to know who the person is because you become one with that person. And when you understand that, you walk out the person. And it's the person saying, be healed. And it's the person walking off knowing that when he speaks, God honors him. So much to that. Anyways, www.royalfamilyinternational.com. School of Identity and Lifestyle. We teach who you are, not who you're not. Right? So that's what I'm about. School of Identity and Lifestyle. I teach a lifestyle and we talk about every, all the ins and outs. We don't just hit surface stuff, right? We talk about it and it's amazing because that's all I want. I want people to walk out what we teach. Don't just teach it, live it out. Don't just teach it, live it out because the best gospel preached is the one lived, right? So, guys, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. Um, we're going to be in India, Nagaland, India, October the 26th through November the 6th, right? We're doing a mission, right? A missions, the RFIU missions, right? We're going to go out there. We're going to crush the enemy. We're going to do what we do. If you want to come out, inbox me, inbox Dieze or Matthew Couch, and we'll go from there. So, guys, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. If you guys want to jump up to be a part of what it is we're doing, just go to the website, www.royalfamilyinternational.com. Check it out. See what we're doing. See what we're about. Love you guys. Subscribe to my channel, right? Just Google me, pcarrerajr.com or pcarrerajr on YouTube. Uh, it's quizot73. If you find it on YouTube, just add me. Subscribe. I'll put this video up. I'll load it up on YouTube. That way it'll stay there so you can find it. And we'll go from there. So, guys, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. Be blessed, be blessed.